Hello, it's me. The disc is just kicked. I'm back. I've uh, been a little bit lazy this weekend, but I hope you'll forgive me for that. Uh, I do have a replay analysis I want to do. This is a private game between Edgar XD and Walker Bow. The map is Page Avenue. I'd never seen it before. Well, a quick summary. Map is divided vertically. Player 2 is on the right side. Player 1 is on the left side. Uh, the top for uh, player 1 is uh, 2 base. The bottom is 1 base, 1 airport. So that's pretty standard. These HQs are very, very far forward. But something unique about it is that the HQs are on the same side as the player's uh, aggressive 2 base side. Uh, that's a little bit unique. Uh, or at least a little more rare, I think. So, uh, without much further ado, let's get started. Again, the players are Edgar XD. Don't know Edgar. But Walker Bow, uh, if you don't know about him, you want to. Pretty standard stuff. I think in the beginning, both players obligated to go for their nearby base. Both players start capping this uh, back city, which will lead to the airport. Yeah, this is all mirrored. That's mirrored. That's not mirrored. So I'm curious about the plan. Uh, maybe send it, sending this infantry forward and this one does the back cap. It's a little strange. I don't know what infantry will cap this city for Edgar XD. Walker made that play as well. Yeah, Walker sent this infantry forward to make a cap on one of these cities over here. It's got to be this one. And uh, an infantry from the outside base to make the cap on this city at, uh, for Walker. It's 1813. For Edgar, it's 05. First tank, Walker on Walker's aggressive side. Playing it on the aggressive side doesn't make all that much sense when it's, it is the two base side, but it's not closer to the opponent's base, which is what I normally think of as the aggressive side. I don't think there's, uh, I'm not privy to the agreed upon, uh, notation for that stuff you'll have to forgive me if i'm saying stuff that's just jargon edgar xd okay so i've talked about this before is that it i think uh, i'm finding it really interesting if players choose to confront tanks if they build them on the same side of the map or if they mirror tanks building them on opposite sides of the map. And I've said, I made the observation, I think maybe even as soon as my last video, that most players uh, generally choose to mirror tank, or to uh, not mirror, but to oppose and contest tanks. But when they build a tank on the same side of the map, it protects infantry a little bit better on that side. It, it limits the aggressive plays that this tank can make. Uh, Walker's tank is the first one, but Edgar chooses to mirror it. So this tank is going to go forward and stop caps, uh, presumably, uh, on these two cities, just like Walker's tank is more or less doing here. Yep. These are on mirrored tiles, even. But, okay, so the second tank for Edgar does uh, contest this and it's actually totally fine because as it stands these infantry can't actually move outside of this tank's range so this was 
I think a pretty smart decision. I don't know if Edgar like knew this, was familiar with it, had all the knowledge, done all the math. Maybe played on it before. Wow, that's super far forward. Man, can you do that? This isn't. This is terrifying. Oh, he can't move in here. That's so. F oh, yeah, this is two spaces. Yeah. This is the safest road in history. I can't believe. Like, when I see this a road, there's a city and and a forest like that. Lashes in the game, I'd start sweating bullets, but Walker, but he understands the super, I don't know how, he probably just took a better look at it than I did. Probably played more games of Advanced Wars than I have, doesn't need to. Walker has a tank in this, in a similar situation to this tank for Edgar. And Edgar's first tank starts heading south, realizing that it can't really pick on these infantry as much as it wanted to. Maybe it can start trying to get an advantage on this tank, which is very far forward. Walker's going to back it up. Yes, yeah, so this one's in hot pursuit now. Oh yeah, the other thing about this map that's wild is is these comm towers. These comm towers are impossible to get to. And I mean that literally. Like, you can't get to them unless you break these pipe seams. And who's got time to break these pipe seams? You're not, I mean, it's, it's not like your opponent can take your command tower from you, I suppose, once you somehow open this. But like, what are you going to do? Are you going to build like an artillery and fire on this? Are you going to build a bomber from this, this airport and move it one tile to hit the... Suppose you could build like a rocket and you could move the rocket into the city and shoot the shoot the pipe seam from the city. That doesn't sound practical at all. None of those solutions are practical, by the way. The the most practical thing you could do probably is build an artillery from the second base on the two base side and move the artillery back into the city and then shoot at it from there. No, you can't even do that. It's too far away. You have to shoot from the shoal, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I'm, I'm decent in counting. I'm not the best. Don't bully me if I got it wrong. Okay, these two tanks are going to save Walker's single tank here, which he did have to back off. These two tanks were looking kind of tough in this other tank. This is probably the scariest one on the map right now. Because it can... We don't know which way it's going to go. It's still covering these two cities. This city... This is too, but... They're just, they're both just posturing, but Walker is getting an income lead, slowly. And now this is really shaping up to be quite a formidable wall. Will Walker build an infant? Yes. Okay. It's an interesting, it's an interesting shot. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try to understand this better. Maybe. So, what's the reason for this attack specifically? So, one primary reason is because to get good terrain, this tank would ha well. Walker would have to move this infantry, but I think that he'll be more than happy to get it to do that because he's not gonna move this cap. He's not gonna get this cap next turn anyways. There's no... This tank is backing this up in a weird way. 
because it can attack any square that usually when you think of like something backing something else up it has to be able to move into the square but this is a unique situation where this tank is backing up this tank without being able to move on to it it can attack anywhere that this tank gets attacked from also this tank has to choose between fighting here or stopping this capture which i'm pretty sure that edgar xd is kind of desperate to get he's he's been at an income disadvantage so he definitely wants to get this city now i'm not sure that that's worth the tank that he paid to do it but Okay, so now this tank's options are really limited. It's got to be from the, the road to the city. These tanks, only this tank, this tank is protecting it on the road, from this road. So that's three tank shots. This, this tank is no longer really able to make that move. This is why you gotta use the move planner, I suppose. Or just be an advanced force pro. I'm really curious. I haven't looked at Edgar XD's profile. I'm going to. Yeah, he's 1200. I, I don't need a lot of walkers to know that he's good at the game. I didn't know what... I didn't know how numerically good Edgar XD was. And I don't care how numerically good walker is. But it's really... This is really great movement. And then the other thing that happens here is that a lot of these infantry move with these tanks to be safe in in their range. That's like the way that these infantry are moving. It's not safe for anyone to take these two cities. I suppose that these four cities are the most hotly contested properties because they're all neutral. Curious to see where this artillery is going to go. So Edgar XD this turn has built, he did skip a build. But this is the first B-Copter that we see, so that Walker Boat's going to have to either build a B-Copter of his own or an anti-air. And another artillery. One, It's one-to-one -one artillery. Okay, so this tank does go for it. The question is, how many tanks can Walker get in range? Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I see. Okay, so Walker is trying to split these response tanks. But I'm not really... I mean, he doesn't have to split these response tanks. This vertical formation is actually just really tough. He, like, this, he's not really trying to split these tanks. I was wrong. This is my first instinct, is that, like, not all of these would have been able to try to respond. But because of the, t the city positioning, I don't think any of them can anyway. So, it doesn't matter for these. What matters for this? Um, and what's going to have to happen is probably at least one of these infantry is going to have to attack here. And then this tank is going to come and hit the one on the city. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. It doesn't feel good hitting it from this road. There's not a good way for one of these tanks to get up here anymore. Bet you wish you played coal now, huh, Edgar? Down here, this vertical line makes this infantry really, really difficult to attack. Because basically, 
the mountain and the unit here make this tank safe. It's only another tank that can attack it. It should be shoal to shoal. And then only a tank can, only one tank or one infantry can attack this infantry here. And then anything that attacks either of these, this tank is backing up. It can kind of go around. Can't right now, but it can go through. What I'm going to guess is going to happen is that Edgar's probably just going to give up an infantry to try to stop this cap for a turn. Wow, that is an imposing vertical line. Artillery in the center to, I guess, move where Walker decides he needs it most. Second tank built. Edgar's fighting it out. This is the equivalent spot on the map for Edgar for his artillery. And indeed it is an infantry that stops that cap. What happened up top? I didn't even really see. Yeah, yeah, I know this turn. Okay. Edgar actually just, Edgar XD just walks back this tank. And it's probably kept safe by another infantry. Yeah, this infantry keeps it safe. I suppose that this tank next turn can go onto the city, or maybe eventually just make an attack. Like, he can make a throwaway attack onto, like, this 5 HP tank or something. So this is something that, that I find interesting. This is, this is a situation that kind of happens semi-frequently, is that you've got this low HP infantry. It's got good terrain, and you've got this full HP infantry and if it was going to attack, it would have bad terrain onto this, this infantry that you're making an attack on. Walker decides to swing the bad infantry first, and also to move the bad infantry onto the bad terrain, which is increasing the amount of damage it takes, probably by about one. And then swing with the full health infantry, which preserve. I wonder if... So there's no chance of, yeah, this probably saves more infantry health in the long run. I'm kind of curious. So. Oh, I can't do that with this setup. That's a disadvantage that it has. The damage calculator can't be a window on its own. I suppose it could if I just kept it somewhere on the left side. How much you guys think about this? Is like is the train info really helpful to you guys? The coordinates probably aren't. Tell me what you think. So it would have had four HP. Yeah, he couldn't have killed it otherwise. So yeah, this is definitely a better move. It's a better maneuver to try to swing with the, the low HP one. This is a really good attack. The second vertical is forming an infantry's walk away from the first. At this turn, Walker builds both a Battlecopter and an Anti-Air, so there's not going to be a safe place for Edgar, who's going in pretty hard at the bottom area. Uh, 
Okay. So, as it stands, this tank is a little exposed, but Walker might be hesitant to try to, to get this because it does have backup in the forms of the battlecopter and these two tanks. The two battlecopters, actually, in, in the... And the two tanks behind it, three battlecopters, and an artillery that can hit something that hits it on the road. So this will survive. I don't think that Walker is going to swing anything into. Now Edgar does need to move something to protect this infantry. That's yeah. Well, even that doesn't. What are his other options here? Okay. Yeah, because if something killed this, then you could walk around. If there was just one here. It sucks that this infantry is on a road and not on at least a plains, though. Looks like Walker's going to secure this. I don't know how Edgar could get out of losing that right now. Doesn't move here at all. That's really fascinating. What happened then? Why is this the formation that he, that Walker chose? Protecting the anterior is certainly important. That's one of the reasons why that it it looks like this. The other reason is because the vertical is is going to be the strongest formation for the way that these two fronts are arranged that like a, a straight vertical line is going to reduce the amount of hits that edgar xd is able to, to score and he can't move the vertical any further back without giving up this city the, the verticals have to be in line with mountains or cities to make them most effective and you you either have like you can't fall back too much from your city or else edgar i suppose would just go up and start capping it or otherwise force an attack out of walker because this is a tank on a city that's enough defense to allow this infantry to be on a on a forest which is substantially better than it being on on a road like these two this one's also on a forest so that's not so bad looking at this in total it's not bad Feels bad that it's just an infantry here. Still very impressive stuff. And so Edgar doesn't necessarily need the vertical here because of the artillery. The way that the artillery is positioned allows 
it, it makes this more effective as a bait than it does as a actual capture attempt. If he gets the cap, that's basically what he wants. That's why he's got the infantry there. But if Walker is willing to throw stuff into it, if a player is willing to throw stuff into it, I don't think Walker will. Then this artillery will make quick work of whatever tries it. Plus, there's only five tanks right around it, so, you know. If somebody finds something that can survive an artillery and five tanks, let me know. This is really scary. So, this, this is Walker's line ramping around Edgar XD's HQ. And there is a black boat on it, so it's relatively safe so it, <laughs> i never really thought about this but a black vote with for the four terrain stars of defense is really obnoxious it's really hard to punch through so now I think that Edgar XD is absolutely forced to fight. Hyper repair. How did he how did he start this turn? Okay. I see. So this is a this artillery is going to cause some amount of issue for Edgar. And I don't know if well, I mean I th I think that this power worked out all right for him. Seems like one of these copters is dead from this AA, which kind of sucks. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I think that Walker's probably just trying to do as much damage as he can. Oh, he's, oh I see. He's building up terrain tactics. Absolute mad lad. He says, I'm going to win. I'm trying to win. Yeah, because he's got the shot on it from here. And this is like plus a bazillion because it's... 60% attack bonus, 70% attack bonus from the superpower and the, the train stars. Is this not enough? Okay, it is enough. Yeah, and now look at this. This is just not possible to get through. Even if you could kill all of these units, which have a bazillion defense thanks to Lash's super. This is an... 80% damage reduction in infantry. Not possible. This is the end. Edgar XD. Does he, does he have an X action? He doesn't. He has to just resign. He either let time run out or he just resigned. There's no more. I'm, I'm clicking the button. It doesn't do anything. This is the end of the game. I can't... I can't do anything else. So that's pretty cool. I'm really happy about looking at this. The way that these guys move around their armies and form those big uh, single-file lines, it gets me high. I'm not going to lie. You, you guys might not think that that kind of geometry is super cool, but uh, it's really neat to see. It's... I, I, I'm still struggling to understand how to transition the early game capping phase into a really effective mid game. Because I think that's like the, the really, really impressive thing that happened here is that like... Yeah, these, these infantry don't, don't look like they're about to form like a big line. 
but you give them like three turns, like that's a vertical line. Sure enough, it's a vertical line. And I mean, if that wasn't this sure as hell is. So that's the juice. That is the mark of the real strong players. It seems is the ability to form these really, really, really difficult to assault uh, groupings of units well defended like i mean here like the, sure this tank is vulnerable in the sense that it's on a terrain tile that doesn't give it any defense but not these two tanks backing it up and how are you going to attack these two tanks you'd have to go through basically these two infantry to get to this infantry because this is the only infantry that you can only attack this once and most things in advanced wars you'd have to attack twice uh Unless you had like an AA or something, then this tank is basically unassailable. And even if you had an AA, then you would just mow down this one infantry, and then what? You'd hit this tank one time, you'd still have to go through this infantry. That's some smart stuff. That's some smart stuff. So yeah, the ability to defend your, your aggressive plays like this the ability to transition your unit's cap phase in the mid-game into something like this. That's the that's the tough stuff. That's it's about learning how to do that, I suppose. So that's it. I'm less than ten subscribers away. I'll have you guys know. Less than ten away from announcing uh, officially the tournament that I've got cooked up it's in it's been in the oven it's ready to go i just gotta take i've had it sitting out on the ledge cooling off i'm gonna take out the uh the blanket that i got on it make sure the flies don't get at it show it to everybody it'll be great hot fresh tournament for everyone with cash prizes the sum total of which is no less than 200 american dollars and we're just 10, less than 10 folks away. We're not even 10 folks away. We're less than that. 10, less than 10 folks away. So, I uh, hope everybody has enjoyed as much as I have. It's been great. Uh, I'll try to do um, some replay analysis next week. I've, I do have a script. I have most of a script of a redo of the Lesson Zero video. Um, that's all. I cut the music because I should be stopping, but I ramble.